Hi, welcome to Free Daily Bread. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this teaching, I held nothing back. So many people, they don't know what it means to be born again. And so thank, thank you for using me to teach people what it means, what happens when they come to the cross. So I pray that they listen to this full teaching to fully understand what it means to be in union with you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, um, we're in chapter, we're in Proverbs 15, verse 10. By the way, this is going to offend a lot of, this whole teaching is going to offend a lot of people because people love their sin more than holiness. So this is intense. Verse 10, correction is grievous unto him that forsakes the way. Look, let me start over. Correction is grievous unto him that forsakes the way and he that hates reproof shall die. Okay, I'm just reading the Bible. Many are very confused when it comes to the words eternal salvation or once saved, always saved. Let me explain this. The true born again convert is yes, once saved, always saved. And they are also the ones with eternal salvation. This is the problem. The problem is this. The problem is when people don't know who is truly saved. They don't examine the fruit to see who is truly working with eternal salvation in the first place. And because of that, when one falls away and goes back into apostasy, goes back into sin, many think they lost their salvation. No. They didn't lose their salvation. They never had salvation because a true convert never falls away. Look at 1 John 2.19. 1 They went out from us, but they were not of us. If, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out. That they might be manifest, they were not of us. There you go. Those who fall away make themselves manifest. They show, they expose that they were never a true convert. So when one claims to be a Christian... And then they fall back into an old life of sin. They did not lose their salvation. They never had it. That makes it very clear in 1 John 2.19. So one can put on the Christian act for years. But if they go back to the old life of willful sin, they were only pretending. And many even deceive themselves. They thought they once had the Holy Spirit, but then they went back to a life of sin and the Holy Spirit left them. That's what they think. No. When the Holy Spirit comes to the true convert, that person is sealed. Sealed until the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is not the Old Testament style in the Old Testament where the Holy Spirit came and then it left. No. The church after the cross when someone receive the whole, receives the Holy Spirit, he doesn't leave. So when a, person, when a person falls back into willful sin, it means they were never saved in the first place. Okay, <clears throat> now that we got that clear. Proof you may not be saved is if you continue willful sin or you go back to willful sin. If they, in verse 10, where are we at? If they forsake, that means leave the way of a holy lifestyle, then their correction in their, dis their, that means their discipline is grievous. That means harsh. If they leave the way thereof and go back to life of sin, it's going to be very difficult for that person. When one, because of this, when one is enlightened and learns God's word, but with a closed heart, 
and they remain in sin or go back to sin, that person is now worse than when they didn't know God's word at all. Look at 2 Peter. 2 Peter 2, 2 verse 21. For it had been better. Look, in 21. I mean, in 20. Talking about someone who... Um, claim to escape the world. They now have Jesus. Okay, but look, but then they, but then they went back to to old life of sin. Twenty one. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. They're worse. Look, now they're like a dog going back to the vomit, a pig going back to the mud. It would have been better for that person to not learn about God at all. That's intense. When one is enlightened, boy, oh boy, these people learned about, see, why is this dangerous? Why are they now in a worse position? Because these people learned about God's mercy. They learned about his love, but they decided their sin was more attractive. And if they keep refusing correction, then God's hands, then God hands them over. Because those who, in verse 10, hate reproof, they hate correction, they, they will die. What's that mean? Hellfire for them. How do you know who are truly saved? You repented from all willful sin. All. All. And you live now to glorify God. It's that easy. It's that easy. The one with eternal salvation lives holy and they never fall away. Ever. They only grow in the image of Christ. So if one falls away, they were not saved. Because a true convert has eternal salvation. Look at Hebrews 5, 9. In being made perfect, talking about Jesus, he became the author of what? Eternal salvation for who? Them that, oh, them that obey him. That's who. Yes, we have to have faith. Faith alone saves us. But what's the results if someone has a saving faith? Obedience. This is very difficult for many people. Look at Romans 8.35. Romans 8.35. Who shall separate us from the love? This is about eternal salvation. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, di distress, distress or persecution, famine, nakedness? That means even being poor or perilous times, peril or the sword. Look, even death. Nothing will separate. Look, look in 37. Because not you're more than conquerors. Because through him that loved us. You're now more than conquerors. Look at 38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers. Look, talking about the demonic realm. Nor things present, nor things to come. Nor height, nor depth. Or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. This is eternal salvation. This makes it very clear. This makes it clear. Who, who, okay. Who are more than conquerors? Look at the verse 37. You're now more than conquerors. Who are more than conquerors? Those who are never separated from God. News alert. Never separated. 
which means you can't fall away. When you come to the cross with a saving faith, you now grow, grow, grow. You get closer and closer and closer to Jesus. You never separate. You never fall away. Amen. The true convert now has God. And why won't they fall away? Here's the important part. What makes a true convert never fall away? Because a true convert now has God's strength to say no to temptation. And they don't plan sin nor, nor, nor act on willful sin because they have conquered their old self through what? The love of Christ. Their love for God alone and their faith alone brought them into a holy lifestyle. That's the proof of eternal salvation. You now live in obedience. Very few teach holy living because very few live a repented lifestyle. That's why most will here depart worker of iniquity. So, again, if one falls from the faith, it means they were never truly even in the faith in the first place. They lied not only to others, but to themselves. And most importantly, they lied to God. Then we got many who think falling back into willful sin is just part of the sanctification process of learning holiness. Their, re their thought process is every born-again Christian goes back to sin. <sighs> That's a lie from the pits of hell. These are people who are hypocrites. They told the world they love Jesus, but they actually love their sin more. So they deceive others that God's grace allows them to sin on purpose. They think the narrow path involves willful sin. They teach grace is... Sorry, let me think. They, they teach grace is a license to sin because they think a heretical belief, almost like it's called hyper grace, hyper grace. Their thought process is the more they sin, then that almost makes them more special because that just means God gives them more grace than others. <laughs> wow. So therefore, they teach sin is a normal act of holy living. And that's a lie from the devil himself. Closing this out. Closing this out. If you have repented from all willful sin and you never go back to that old life of disgusting sin, then you have eternal salvation. When you teach this, many who can't stop willful sin, they will think I'm teaching sinless perfection. No, I'm not. What it, what it is, we need to know the difference between a presumptuous planned out sin and an accidental sin. A true convert will not do something on purpose that God hates. And if they do, then they are the ones in verse 10 who hated correction and they will die. Verse 11. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more than the hearts of the children of men? 11. If you made it through verse 11 with me, then okay. Bless you. <laughs> Very few are going to listen to this whole teaching. Verse 11. God sees what we cannot, obviously. 
Hell is invisible to us, but to God, God sees it very clear. Imagine this. Imagine if hell was visible for all. It's like a place everyone could see on earth. People will repent then, I bet you that. Woe to those who refused correction and thought sin would be approved to be in the presence of a holy God. God is still 100% love as he has surveillance of people that he casted into hell for eternity. He sees what's in hell. You understand? God is still 100% love as he is watching people being tormented in hell right now. You see, the true God offends people. That's why people don't read the Bible. They place the place most remote from heaven. God still sees he still sees through the darkest pitch of the torment for those that refused him. And if that offends you, then that's your problem. They re these people burning in hell that he's watching, they refused God in the Old Testament, and they refused Christ after the cross as the perfect sacrifice. So hell is the place where they now pay for their own debt of sin. You see, sin must be punished. God is a just judge. He is love and he is holy. Look at Revelation 14, 10. Fourteen ten. The same, talking about the wrath of God. People who got the mark of the beast, they shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, poured out without mixture. Then he's very the strongest. Look, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. Look, that's hell. Look, where? In the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. Jesus sees it. He sees it all. He sees what's going on in hell. He's omnipresent. Yes, when people are casted into hell, they're casted from the presence of God, but that doesn't mean he can't see them. Shoof. So if God sees, this is an intense teaching, I know. So if God sees in the pitch black depths of hell, he can definitely see in verse 11 in the hearts of every human. How much more? If one can't say no to temptation and so easily go back to willful sin, they should be terrified that God knows their heart. Some also think that you can sin on purpose just as long as you feel bad. I hear this a lot. Oh, just as long as you have a conscience that you still know it's bad, then that's okay. Okay, let me let me explain how ignorant that theology is. Imagine this. A wife knows cheating on her husband is bad. But she cheats on him. Okay? Because she knows that it's bad. Let me get this right. She thinks it's okay because she knows it's wrong and she feels bad for doing it. So therefore she can cheat on her husband because just as long as I feel bad, then it's okay. <clears throat> News alert. If you know a sin offends God, then guess what? You won't do it. Just like a faithful wife wouldn't cheat on her husband. She knows it's not right. You see, I feel like I have to teach repentance like I'm talking to two-year-olds. It's like nailing jelly to a wall sometimes. But really, I'm going to say at least 90% at least of so-called Christians think it's okay to continue old sin. Why do you think God says, many call me Lord, but they were told to depart for, for being workers of iniquity? Many. That means the majority. 
people not working with God's strength to say no to sin, they find it. These are the people that find it impossible to live a full, repented lifestyle. You see, it's a prophecy. They have a form of godliness, but they deny his power. The God that spoke everything into existence can definitely turn a sinner into a saint. All that person needs to do is have faith, humble themselves, and then God's strength will bring victory over sin in their life. Why do you think Jesus is called a chain breaker? Because he breaks us from the bondage of sin. So are you not free from sin? Well, then question your salvation. Because it's saving faith and one that's totally humble to the cross, that's the one working with God's strength. So if you can't say to no to sin, you're still in bondage, stuck in sin, though that's because you're not working with God's strength. You're working with your own strength and your own strength is only weakness. Examine your faith. Verse 12. A scorner loves not one that reproves him, neither will he go unto the wise. Many won't like my message on the last two verses for one main reason, and this is it. Because in verse 12, scorners love not, that means hate. Scorners hate the ones that reprove them. In verse 12, scorners defend their sin, and they scorn at the one teaching repentance. It should be of no surprise because every prophet and man of God in the, Bi in the whole Bible taught the message of repent or perish. Every single one. That's why they were scorned. That's why they were persecuted. That's why they were hated and even killed. Willful sinners hate the one teaching holy living. They hate the one teaching repentance. How are so many so-called Christians so loved by the world that crucified Jesus and hates all his followers in the Bible? Christianity in the Bible should be the same today. If you are not hated by this wicked world, then it's because you may be the scorner and not the one that reproves. The Holy Spirit was sent to teach the world about sin and holy living. So how do so many so-called Christians not teach or show the world about its sin and lead them to repentance? If the Holy Spirit is inside of you, that's the result. That's what you're going to do. They want to be loved by the world. That's the problem. They want to be loved by the world. That's why. So, so these frauds would rather get advice. They don't want to go to the wise. In verse 12. Okay. Why not? Why don't they want to go to the wise? Because these frauds would rather get advice from unbelievers. Because it's too much conviction to get life advice from one that reproves. They don't want to go to the wise. Look at Amos 5.10. They, that's the world, hate him that rebukes in the gate. That means openly, an open rebuke. And they abhor him, they hate him that speaks uprightly, that speaks truth. The world hates those who rebukes sin they hate those that speak truth. That's the world we live in. The world hates correction and the world hates truth. When I say world, I refer to the lost souls, the majority. They don't, you see what happens is they don't love themselves enough to take account of what they do. This is the do not judge crowd. 
They are like a wild ox that can't be learned. This is because they hate the light. Why? Because the light exposes their fraudulent faith. Look at John 3, 2. I'm sorry, John 3, 20. For everyone that does evil hates the light. Neither comes to the light. What's the light? That's Jesus. Lest his deed should be reproved. And that means exposed. That's why many people don't come to the cross faithfully and honestly and humbly. It's too much conviction. It shows that God is ultimate holy and the person is an ultimate dirty rotten sinner. That's why many people don't want to come to the cross. Well, Whew. this is why if you are a true Christian trying to lead others to Christ as the salt and the light of the world, you will lose friends. You will lose family and you may lose a job and you may even lose your life. Fraudulent Christians will no longer want to be around real Christians. Why? Because the true Christian, their lifestyle brings them too much conviction that they are not living holy. It brings them too much conviction that their faith is fraudulent. So they depart from the true Christian and they don't want to any more of their wise counsel. They don't want correction. They don't want to hear about the Bible. They don't like to converse with the wise. But yet their pride in narcissism will continue the act that they are a real Christian. They don't want to be around real Christians, but they'll pretend that they are a real Christian. <clears throat> they're so narcissistic that holy living that's for other people to enter heaven but for them they don't need repentance they don't need repentance because their god little g can live with sin his name is satan look at those around you be very careful of your friend circle do you not have any friend to tell you to read the Bible or admonish you when necessary? Because if not, you may not be around the wise. And yes, it's difficult to find true Christian, true Christian converts. It's very difficult to find these people. If that's the, if that's the case, you don't have a circle right now. Pray. Pray for God to bring you in a small circle of his people that are truly the salt, truly the light, truly repented, truly born again, to teach you and encourage you to live holy and make, and make wise decisions if you need guidance. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, very few understand what it means to work with your grace. They don't know you and the outcome is thinking your grace is an approval of sin. Those who know you, they live holy. They know your grace was undeserved and they would never want to frustrate that grace. I pray more stop living on the fence of hypocrites living in sin and claiming you are their Lord. If you are truly their Lord, they would be living in obedience. It's easy to see who truly loves you and doesn't take lightly what you did for us on the cross. One who truly comes to the cross with a saving faith will be forever changed forever. Your eyes search the hearts and you know who is true. So search our hearts, Lord, and if anything offends you, remove it from our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.